the Isles of Cilia and Archipelago off the southwestern tip of the Cornish Peninsula of Great Britain. The population of all the islands at the 2011 census was 2,203. Scilly forms part of the ceremonial county of Cornwall, and sim services are combined with those of Cornwall. However, since 1890, the islands have had a separate local authority. Since the passing of the Isles of Scilly Order 1930, this authority has had the status of a county council and today is known as the Council of the Isles of Scilly. The adjective, Salonian, is sometimes used for people or things related to the archipelago. The Duchy of Cornwall owns most of the freehold land on the islands. Tourism is a major part of the local economy, along with farming and agriculture. History Ancient history Scilly has been inhabited since the Stone Age, and until the early 20th century its history had been one of subsistence living. Farming and fishing continue, but the main industry now is tourism. The islands may correspond to the Cassiterides visited by the Phoenicians and mentioned by the Greeks. However, the archipelago itself does not contain much tin, it may be that the islands were used as a staging post. It is likely that until relatively recent times the islands were much larger and perhaps joined together into one island named Enna. Rising sea levels flooded the central plain around 400-500, add forming the current 55 islands and islets. If an island is defined as land surrounded by water at high tide and supporting land vegetation, the word Enna is a contraction of En Noah, meaning the Great Island. Evidence for the older large island includes a description in Roman times describes Cilia's Silonia and Sila in the singular, indicating either a single island or an island much bigger than any of the others. Remains of a prehistoric farm have been found on Nornor, which is now a small rocky scary far too small for farming. There once was an Iron Age Britain community here that extended into Roman times. This community was likely formed by immigrants from Brittany, likely the Venetia who were active in the tin trade from mining in Cornwall and Devon. At certain low tides the sea becomes shallow enough for people to walk between some of the islands. This is possibly one of the sources for stories of drowned lands, e.g. Lionessa. Ancient field walls are visible below the high tide line off some of the islands. Some of the Cornish language place names also appear to reflect past shorelines and former land areas. The whole of southern England has been steadily sinking in opposition to post-glacial rebound in Scotland. This has caused the rias on the southern Cornish coast, e.g., River Fal and the Tamer Estuary. Offshore, midway between Land's End and the Isles of Scilly, is the supposed location of the mythical lost land of Lyonessa, referred to in Arthurian literature, of which Tristan is said to be a king. This may be a folk memory of inundated lands. But this legend is also common among the Brythonic peoples. The legend of Wise is a parallel and cognate legend in Brittany as is that of Cantarar, Guaralod in Wales. Scilly has been identified as the place of exile of two heretical 4th-century bishops, Instantius and Tiberianus, who were followers of Priscillian. Norse and Norman period in 995 Olaf Trygesson became King Olaf I of Norway. Born c. 960, Olaf had raided various European cities and fought in several wars. In 986 he met a Christian seer on the Isles of Scilly. He was probably Priscillian and a part of the tiny Christian community that was exiled here from Spain by Emperor Maximus for Priscillianism in their part in the Priscilline heresy. In Snorra Sturluson's Royal Sagas of Norway, it is stated that this seer told him, Thou wilt become a renowned king, and do celebrated deeds. Many men wilt thou bring to faith in baptism, and both to thy own and others good, and that thou mayst have no doubt of the truth of this answer. Listen to these tokens. 
When thou comest to thy ships many of thy people will conspire against thee, and then a battle will follow in which many of thy men will fall, and thou wilt be wounded almost to death, and carried upon a shield to thy ship, yet after seven days thou shalt be well of thy wounds, and immediately thou shalt let thyself be baptized. The legend continues that, as the seer foretold, Olaf was attacked by a group of mutineers upon returning to his ships. As soon as he had recovered from his wounds, he let himself be baptized. He then stopped raiding Christian cities and lived in England and Ireland. In 995, he used an opportunity to return to Norway. When he arrived, the Harkonjal was facing a revolt. Olaf Trygesin persuaded the rebels to accept him as their king, and Jarl Harkin was murdered by his own slave, while he was hiding from the rebels in a pigsty. With the Norman conquest, the Isles of Scilly came more under centralized control. About 20 years later, the Doomsday Survey was conducted. The islands would have formed part of the Exeter Doomsday Circuit, which included Cornwall, Devon, Dorset, Somerset, and Wiltshire. In the mid-12th century, there was reportedly a Viking attack on the Isles of Scilly, called Silingar by the Norse. Recorded in the Orkneying Saga, Swain as Lefson went south under Ireland and seized a barge belonging to some monks in Selingar and plundered it. Dock the three chiefs, Swine, Thorbjorn and Eric, went out on a plundering expedition. They went first to the Sudriar, Hebrides, and all along the west to the Selingar, where they gained a great victory in Maria Hunt on Columbus Mass the 9th of June, and took much booty. Then they returned to the Orkneys, Mariahon, literally means Mary's Harbour, Haven. The name does not make it clear if it referred to a harbour on a larger island than today's St. Mary's, or a whole island. It is generally considered that Cornwall, and possibly the Isles of Scilly, came under the dominion of the English crown late in the reign of Athelstan. In early times one group of islands was in the possession of a confederacy of hermits. King Henry I gave it to the Abbey of Tavistock who established a priory on Tresco, which was abolished at the Reformation. Later Middle Ages and early modern period at the turn of the 14th century, the abbot and convent of Tavistock Abbey petitioned the king, Stat, Ing, that they hold certain isles in the sea between Cornwall and Ireland, of which the largest is called Scilly to which ships come passing between France, Normandy, Spain, Bayonne, Gascony, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and Cornwall, and, because they feel that in the event of a war breaking out between the kings of England and France, or between any of the other places mentioned, they would not have enough power to do justice to these sailors, they ask that they might exchange these islands for lands in Devon. Saving the churches on the islands appropriated to them, William Le Poer's coroner of Scilly, is recorded in 1305 as being worried about the extent of wrecking in the islands and sending a petition to the king. The names provide a wide variety of origins, e.g., Robert and Henry Sage, Richard de Trigenister, Ace de Veldre, Davy Gotch, and Adam Lofew as Yaldich. It is not known at what point the island's inhabitants stopped speaking the Cornish language, but the language seems to have gone into decline in Cornwall beginning in the late Middle Ages. It was still dominant between the islands and Bodmin at the time of the Reformation but it suffered an accelerated decline thereafter. The islands appear to have lost the old Celtic language before parts of Penworth on the mainland. In contrast to the history of Irish or Scottish Gaelic, during the English Civil War, the parliamentarians captured the Isles, only to see their garrison mutiny and return the Isles to the Royalists. By 1652 the royalist governor, Sir John Grenville, was using the islands as a base for privateering raids on Commonwealth and Dutch shipping. The Dutch Admiral Martin Tromp sailed to the Isles and on arriving on 30 May 1651 demanded compensation. In absence of compensation or a satisfactory reply, he declared war on England in June. It was during this period that the 335 years' war started between the Isles and the Netherlands. 
In June 1651, Admiral Robert Blake recaptured the Isles for the Parliamentarians. Blake's initial attack on Old Grimsby failed, but the next attack succeeded in taking Tresco and Briar. Blake placed a battery on Tresco to fire on St. Mary's, but one of the guns exploded, killing its crew and injuring Blake. A second battery proved more successful. Subsequently, Grenville and Blake negotiated terms that permitted the Royalists to surrender honorably. The parliamentary forces then set to fortifying the islands. They built Cromwell's Castle, a gun platform on the west side of Tresco, using materials scavenged from an earlier gun platform further up the hill. Although this poorly sighted earlier platform dated back to the 1550s, it is now referred to as King Charles's Castle. During the night of the 22nd of October 1707, the Isles were the scene of one of the worst maritime disasters in British history. When out of a fleet of 21 Royal Navy ships headed from Gibraltar to Portsmouth, six were driven onto the cliffs. Four of the ships sank or capsized, with at least 1,450 dead, including the commanding Admiral Sir Cloud Lee Shovel. There is evidence for inundation by the tsunami caused by the 1755 Lisbon earthquake. The islands appear to have been raided frequently by Barbary pirates to enslave residents to support the Barbary slave trade. Governors of Scilly An early governor of Scilly was Thomas Godolphin, whose son Francis received a lease on the Isles in 1568. They were style governors of Scilly and the Godolphins and their Osborne relatives held this position until 1834. In 1834 Augustus John Smith acquired the lease from the duchy for £20,000. Smith created the title Lord Proprietor of the Isles of Scilly for himself, and many of his actions were unpopular. The lease remained in his family until it expired for most of the Isles in 1920 when ownership reverted to the Duchy of Cornwall. Today, the Dorian Smith estate still holds the lease for the island of Tresco. 1568-1608 Sir Francis Godolphin 1608-1613 Sir William Godolphin of Godolphin 1613-1636 William Godolphin, 1636-1643 Sidney Godolphin, 1643-1667 Sir Francis Godolphin of Godolphin, 1667-1712 Sidney Godolphin, 1st Earl of Godolphin, 1712-1766 Francis Godolphin, 2nd Earl of Godolphin, 1766-1785, Thomas Osborne, 4th Duke of Leeds, 1785-1799, Francis Osborne, 5th Duke of Leeds, 1799-1831, George Osborne, 6th Duke of Leeds, 1834-1872, Augustus John Smith, 1872-1918, Thomas Algernon Smith, Dorian Smith, 1918-1920 Arthur Algernon Dorian Smith Geography The Isles of Scilly form an archipelago of five inhabited islands and numerous other small rocky islets lying 45 kilometers off land's end. They are all composed of granite rock of early Permian age, an exposed part of the Cornubian Bathlith. The island's position produces a place of great contrast, the ameliorating effect of the sea, greatly influenced by the North Atlantic current, means they rarely have frost or snow, which allows local farmers to grow flowers well ahead of those in mainland Britain. The chief agricultural products is cut flowers, mostly daffodils. Exposure to Atlantic winds also means that spectacular winter gales lash the islands from time to time. This is reflected in the landscape, most clearly seen on Tresco where the lush subtropical abbey gardens on the sheltered southern end of the island contrast with the low heather and bare rock sculpted by the wind on the exposed northern end. Natural England has designated the Isles of Scilly as National Character Area 158. As part of a 2002 marketing campaign, the plant conservation charity Plant Life chose Sea Thrift as the county flower of the islands. This table provides an overview of the most important islands. 
inhabited until 1855. In 1975 the islands were designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty. The designation covers the entire archipelago, including the uninhabited islands and rocks, and is the smallest such area in the UK. The islands of Arnott and Samson have large terneries and the islands are well populated by seals. The Isles of Scilly are the only British haunt of the lesser white-toothed shrew. The islands are famous among bird watchers for their ability to attract rare birds from all corners of the globe. The peak time of year for this is generally in October when it is not unusual for several of the rarest birds in Europe to share this archipelago. One reason for the success of these islands in producing rarities is the extensive coverage these islands get from bird watches but archipelagos are often favoured by rare birds which like to make landfall and eat there before continuing their journeys and often arrive on far. Flung Islands First Tidal influx The tidal range at the Isles of Scilly is high for an open sea location. The maximum for St. Mary's is 5.99 metres. Additionally, the inter-island waters are mostly shallow, which at spring tides, allows for dry land walking between several of the islands. Many of the northern islands can be reached from Tresco, including Briar, Samson and St. Martins. From St. Martin's White Island, Little Ganilly and Great Arthur are reachable. Although the sound between St. Mary's and Tresco, the road, is fairly shallow. It never becomes totally dry, but according to some sources it should be possible to wade at extreme low tides. Around St. Mary's several minor islands become accessible, including Taylor's Island on the west coast and Tolls Island on the east coast. From St. Agnes, Gu becomes accessible at each low tide, via a tombolo. Climate The Isles of Scilly has a temperate oceanic climate, and has one of the mildest climates in the United Kingdom. The average annual temperature is 11.8 degrees Celsius in comparison to London, where it is 11.6 degrees Celsius. Winters are among the warmest in the country due to the moderating effects of the ocean, and despite being on exactly the same latitude as Winnipeg in Canada, snow and frost are extremely rare. Summers are not as warm as on the mainland. The Scilly Isles are one of the sunniest areas in the southwest with on average 6.9 hours per day in June. The lowest temperature ever recorded was minus 7.2 degrees Celsius on 13 January 1987 and the highest was 27.8 degrees Celsius. The maximum snowfall was 23 centimetres on 12 January 1987. Geology The Irish Sea Glacier terminated near the Scilly Islands during the Ice Age. Government National government Politically, the islands are part of England, one of the four countries of the United Kingdom. They are represented in the UK Parliament as part of the St. Ives constituency. As part of the United Kingdom, the islands are part of the European Union and are represented in the European Parliament as part of the multi-member South West England constituency. Local government Historically, the Isles of Scilly were administered as one of the hundreds of Cornwall, although the Cornwall Quarter Sessions had limited jurisdiction there. For judicial purposes, shrievalty purposes, and lieutenancy purposes, the Isles of Scilly are deemed to form part of the County of Cornwall. The archipelago is part of the Duchy of Cornwall. The Duchy owns the freehold of most of the land on the islands and the Duke exercises certain formal rights and privileges from across the territory, as he does in Cornwall proper. The Local Government Act 1888 allowed the local government board to establish in the Isles of Scilly councils and other local authorities separate from those of the County of Cornwall. For the application to the islands of any act touching local government, accordingly, in 1890 the Isles of Scilly Rural District Council was formed as a sui generis unitary authority outside the administrative county of Cornwall. Cornwall County Council provided some services to the Isles, for which the RDC made financial contributions.
The Isles of Scilly Order 1930 granted the council the powers, duties and liabilities of a county council. Section 265 of the Local Government Act of 1972 allowed for the continued existence of the RDC, but renamed as the Council of the Isles of Scilly. This unusual status also means that much administrative law that applies in the rest of England applies in modified form in the islands. The Council of the Isles of Scilly is a separate authority to the Cornwall Council Unitary Authority, and as such the islands are not part of the administrative county of Cornwall. However the islands are still considered to be part of the ceremonial county of Cornwall. With a total population of just over 2,000, the council represents fewer inhabitants than many English parish councils and is by far the smallest English unitary council. As of 2015, 130 people are employed full-time by the council to provide local services. These numbers are significant, in that almost 10% of the adult population of the islands is directly linked to the council. As an employee or a councillor, the council consists of 21 elected councillors, 13 of which are elected by the ward of St. Mary's, and two from each of four off-island wards. The latest elections took place on 2 May 2013. All 20 elected were independents. The council is headquartered at Town Hall, by the Parade Park in Hugh Town, and also performs the administrative functions of the ANB Partnership and the Inshore Fisheries and Conservation Authority. Some aspects of local government are shared with Cornwall, including health, and the Council of the Isles of Scilly together with Cornwall Council form a local enterprise partnership. In July 2015 a devolution deal was announced by the government under which Cornwall Council and the Council of the Isles of Scilly are to create a plan to bring health and social care services together under local control. The local enterprise partnership is also to be bolstered. Flags Two flags are used to represent Scilly. The flag of the Council of the Isles of Scilly, which incorporates the Council's logo, the unofficial Salonian cross, selected by readers of Scilly News in a 2002 vote. An adapted version of the old Board of Ordnance flag has also been used, after it was left behind when munitions were removed from the Isles. The Cornish ensign has also been used. Emergency services The Isles of Scilly form part of the Devon and Cornwall Police Force area. There is a police station in Hugh Town. The Cornwall Air Ambulance Helicopter provides cover to the islands. The islands have their own independent fire brigade, the Isles of Scilly Fire and Rescue Service, which is staffed entirely by retained fire fighters on all the inhabited islands.